Hello and welcome to episode 22 of my RuneScape tutorial Let's Play series. This episode is going to be on having some fun with the divination skill. Divination is a gathering skill where the energy and memories of a slain god are gathered to create useful portents and signs. As you level you unlock the ability to transmute resources into better ones and create div divine locations for players to harvest. Free to play players can train divination to level 5 through harvesting and converting pale memories so yeah this is the members uh, skill um, and it is a lot of fun but if we look at the divination which is at the bottom here in the middle and we take a look so we start by having we have to do the pale wisps which obviously I'm on level 1 with 0 XP at the moment so we've got to start on the pale wisps and if you left click it says located to the west of Lumbridge crater near the divination camp can also be found in Damon Helm. So that's where we start. We're going to start gathering them. But as we go and we level up, we're going to get rewarded along the way with some really nice things, in my humble opinion. The first will be that we get access to straight away is the, the divi Divine Crayfish Bubble. Can be placed to gather crayfish. Others using the bubble have a chance to award the owner with noted crayfish. Placement has no level requirement, but uh, use requires level 1 fishing. So to make it though, we will need 5 pale energy and 20 raw crayfish. So it's it's a nice idea, but you know, to use 20 raw crayfish to do it, I'm not sure I would, because I wouldn't want to waste the 20 in order, you know, unless we're talking I'm going to get 100. Maybe I'll try it so we can see. Yeah, yeah, I'll give that a go and hopefully someone else will fish on the spot otherwise we won't notice any benefits um, so here we've got 100 we can put 100 cursed uh, energy transmute so we can transmute 150 pale to cursed now cursed wisps are in the wilderness here's the first nice item portent, portent of restoration Automatically consumed when you are damaged to under half your life points. This portent will restore 150 life points, but requires 10 constitution to use. Well, I've got 20 constitution, so that will be the first nice item. And you always want to keep one of them in your inventory, because if your health, like it said, drops below half, you can then it will automatically use it and heal you up. For that given amount does it tell us how much yeah 150 life points so that could save your life but obviously as we delve deeper into it it gets cooler and cooler and cooler but don't take my word for it let's go check it out so we got to go to the left of Lumbridge yeah I really like the divination skill um, it was added, I don't know, four, five, six years, oh, I don't know, I'm completely guessing. A long, many years ago it was added, and it's a great skill. It's very easy as well, which makes it enjoyable. So that's the Wisp Colony icon. And there should be some people we can talk to. Yeah, here we go, look, who's this? So we can talk to Orla Fairweather. What's going on here? So glad you asked. I'm Orla Fairweather, and these are my colleagues. We're pioneers researching the art of divination. Divination? You mean like reading tea leaves, casting bones, that sort of thing? Oh no, this is much larger. Here, we are dealing with the energy of the world. The fate of Gillinor may be determined by our actions. Wow, that does sound interesting. Oh yes, it's early days, but we've had exciting results already. Can I start training divination myself? Of course, we could use all the help we can get. The first step is to gather a memory. 
The wisps to the south will do. See how you get on and come back to me if you need help. Okay, right. So look, it's giving us a little pointer. And here's the wisps, wisps down there. We just highlight over one and left click. Oh, there we go. Completed. Collecting memorabilia. So I clicked on one then, without even realising it. And now it's automatically gathering essence from this spring. And you see I'm getting experience as it gathers. And also I'm getting two items. I'm getting pale memories and I'm getting uh, weave pale energy. Uh, so I'm getting pale energy and I'm getting pale memories. Now the pale energy, we can use that in the rift. Or we can use the pale memories, we'll see anyway. Right, so I'm going to do another one, so my pocket's full. And then we're going to go use the energy rift. It looks, oh look, there's a special one. Always keep your eyes out for them. And if you can, gather them. So I'm going to gather it. Because you get the, you have collected a chronicle fragment. Speak to May at the divination camp to find out more. So cool. Yeah, always keep your eyes peeled. Um, these rare ones appear. And they give you these items, chronicle items. So that was May. Let's go back and talk to May so I may know what this is actually about. Because I haven't got a clue. So where's May? I think she's over here. Oh, there we are, May Stormweather. I'd like to talk about Chronicles. Ah, Chronicles are a rare find. As you may have seen, sometimes a Chronicle will appear when harvesting a wisp. Chronicles can be thought of as particularly strong memories, powerful remnants of Guthix's life force. Offer them where? It must be somewhere with a powerful connection to Guthix. So far, we have discovered two places. The one available to you is right here in the crater. This area seems to be full of Guthix's residual energy. If you choose to, I can help you offer your chronicles here. There's another area you can offer your chronicles that will give you a greater reward. But something tells me you're not ready to go there yet. Yeah, so I need to level up a bit. Um, so I have some chronicles to hand in. Of course. I will aid you. If you have any chronicle fragments in your bank, I can draw them here. So don't worry about collecting them. And there we go. Look at that. I've just got a huge amount of experience for divination. 30 XP. And if you've been watching, getting just ones as these collect. So that moved the bar right around. That's why you want to keep your eyes open for the rare... Um, wisps that appear. They appear every now and again. So let's carry on collecting. Yeah, this is just such a fun, lovely skill. Really enjoy it. Oh look, I got these teleports to uh, memory strands. You find 22 memory strands. Oh, right, okay. Wow, look at that, just got a load more. Right, okay, so my pocket's full. I'm now going to left click on Convert Memories, Energy Rift. And look at that, completed. What an experience. And, oops, let's step away. So I've got level up and I'm getting all these new things which we can look at. Uh, if we go to the skill, we can see exactly what that was. So yeah, I can make now that portent of restoration. Um, portent of Restoration in Damon Helm and a Portent of Passage. Oh, what's that? Let's have a look. 
So we'll offer to open a Dungeoneering skill door which has requirements you don't meet within two skill levels. Okay, so it's not a huge amount, but as these uh, portents get stronger, so will the amount of levels, skill levels. So, you know, it's got to start off weak. Okay, now let's try. If I right click, you'll see that I've got an option to configure the energy rift. If you just left click, you convert them. Let's show you. You automatically convert these PAL memories. But if you right click, you can configure energy rift, which brings up this window. Right, okay, so you have three options to choose from, which are the first ones convert memories into energy. This provides one experience per memory. Um, the second one convert memories into experience. This provides normal experience. When using this option, it will use up your normal memories first. And then the third option, convert memories and energy into it enhanced experience. This provides more experience per memory, but uses up five energy for every normal memory converted and ten energy for every enriched memory. When using this option, the enriched memories will hold you hold will be used up first. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one first here memory to conversion memory conversion you will now convert memories into energy so if I left click you go oh, got that energy generator and it's turning these into so it's turning pale memories into pale energy and the pale energy I believe if you left click brings up the crafting window and that's what you need in order to create uh, the the items so the divine crayfish bubble uh, we need level one and per so you can only create one per day and it's going to use five pale energy so five of these are going to be let's do it so I'm going to click uh, Oh, wait a minute, maybe it won't let... Oh no, there we go. Of course I haven't got the 20 raw crayfish. But if I had the 20 raw crayfish, it will use up five of them and the crayfish. Let's go to the next one. So that requires one crayfish. That's a bit more reasonable for the portent of restoration. Um, is there a bank near here? Yeah, there is actually, just there. No, let's carry on. I'm just going to show. So we know that if I went to the bank, got one raw crayfish, it will use 30 of these pale, pale energies, the crayfish, and I'll get my autumn, which I will do at the end of this episode. So now I'm going to right click, configure. This time I'm going to do. Oh, why is it saying that? Oh, yeah, this is the one that I did first of all which is converts memories into experience uh, so I'm going to do the third one now converts memories and energy into enhanced experience so I can demonstrate that you will now convert memories and energy into XP okay so I'm going to left click and you see it uses both but I don't want to use them up because I want to craft that portent, but I only need 30 of them, I guess. So what I'm going to do is configure it and set it back to this one. So that will give me loads of energy so I can craft. Or well, maybe I should level up a bit. I mean, the choice is yours what path you want to go. But I do like, let's have a look at what level to get something decent. See that's perfect for if it's a really crowded spot which normally they are but 
Um, not at the moment on the server I'm on, so... Yeah, so that would be nice as well. So I'm not really... I've got enough to do this portent. So I'm going to actually go with the experience. Because I only need to keep 30 of them pale energies. So that one. You will now convert memories into XP and keep the energy. So I'll keep what I've got back, but these are convert. So let's do that. See that I'm getting free XP now per pale memory. And my pale energy is not being touched. Now there's 12 locations you can go to as you level from 1 to 95 in divination. As they increase, they obviously give more experience so we'll find out where the next place is in another episode when I move on to another one now let's keep my eyes open in case one of them rare wisps appears I think it's always best to be zoomed out completely so you can see if any rares appear because if there's other people in the area they will go for the wisp as well and it's first come, first serve. Whoever gets it first, clicks on it first. So as you can see, it's a really nice skill. Um, let's show what these strands do. Oh, look at that. Okay, another level. Bronze rock. So I can make a divine location on either tin or copper. Oh, that one's used up. Let's find another one. Sometimes they're really quick, sometimes you take a while. It's just like fishing, really. Except there's lots more of them floating around than fishing holes. Okay, let's do that one. Okay, right, let's do this, let's configure it, and now I want enhanced experience. You will now convert memories and energy, so both of them, remember I only need 30 of these, so I'm going to boost that up. And notice it's using these up. Quickly, uh, these one at a time, so they're going at about the same speed. Right, 30. Oh, I went just a bit too much. Doesn't matter, I can collect some more. So let's configure it again uh, to just using these. I'm going to need one more of them now. So just the pale memories. All oh, right, so that's oh, not watching that. That's plenty of them. Oh, was I? Did I click on this by mistake? I don't know. All right, let's configure this and uh, just the XP.
Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to use them all up from my pocket. I'm going to keep the 40 of them so I can make the uh, portent of restoration. Oh, level 4. Divine Kebet Burrow. So, yeah, that's something we have to do at some point. Hunting. See, it doesn't take long to level up. Right, okay, let's go do this, make this portent. So at least I've made one thing. I think, oh, there's the nearest bank. Yeah, it's just here. Okay, and it's used the bank. So I want one raw crayfish. Oh no, there's shrimps. Lobster, oh there they are. Raw crayfish, there we go. Now we click on the pale energy. And portent of restoration. Oh no, it needs to be a cooked crayfish. Wait a minute, you can use any of the following. Right, shrimps, it is then. So, let's take a cooked shrimp. I've only got one, because I haven't done cooking yet. Come out of there. Click on that. There we go, that's better. So now weave that. And look at that, cool. Completed potentially hazardous and that is an automatic heal remember if my hit points gets under half health so very useful item to carry with you only when you're hunting of course uh, you don't you want to leave it in the bank at all other times so that's what I'm gonna do I'm not doing any hunting at the moment so let's just throw it all in there now I was gonna look at these to finish off this episode so let's get one if I left click on that memory strand That's now teleported me to here. So if we now have a look on the map, because this has totally all changed. I've never never seen this before. But this is something new. Ah, yes. Okay. Very, very handy for teleporting over to here. Although there is a lodestone just there, Eagle's Peak. Very handy, though, for the Hall of Memories. Yeah. Okay, should we have a quick look, see what this is, this Hall of Memories? Oh, all the... Oh, Fairweather, she travelled quickly. Let's talk to her. What is this place? It's been here for years, my dear. I knew of it. I've read of it, but we could never see it. It was kept hidden from view for reasons I know not. Ever since Gumpfix left this world, I've been gaining an ever-increasing sense of this place's existence. Tiny strands of Gumpfixian memories have started appearing near divination craters. It's like they were hidden from few until now. I'll try to explain what I've been researching since I've been here. It's all coming back to me slowly. It all starts with engrams. Engrams are permanent markers left on the timeline. They've, they're caused by the, the significant activity of living things and can only be spotted by those who have an adept understanding of divination. So it sounds like I'm not high enough level, for starters. It is possible to charge these engrams by infusing them with divine energy and memory strands. What does that do to them? Oh, it's Fieta of Light and Magic, my dear. The engrams hold an echo of history. These echoes all belong to Gumfix, right? Engrams, memory strands, divine energy, they're all part of Gumfix's ritual life force. How very astute. I suppose I should expect nothing less from you. I have only ever changed a couple of weak engrams, but they were both from the viewpoint of Gumfix himself. We can assume that the rest are almost certainly related to Gumfix as well. There could be so much valuable information stored in these engrams. How do we find them? In the centre of this concourse behind me, you'll see a pool brimming with energy. You'll probably sense it before you see it. It gives off such a glorious aura. 
all of the plimps inside the building are somehow connected to this pole. Once charged, I could display the echoes found inside the engrams there, just like statues of raw life, animated echoes of reality. If you tinker with the plimps, you may be able to discover a vague idea of locations of other engrams. I can't promise that they will be easy to detect, though. So once I've found an engram, I can charge it by filling it with divine energy and these memory strands. Yes, and then bring it to me. I can get the pool of energy to absorb any charged engrams that you bring here. After that, you should be free to interact with the echoes as you see fit. This seems simple enough, but let me quickly recap. I need to use the plimps to get hints about where to find the engrams, then charge these engrams with memory strands and divine energy, and then give them to you to add to the pool here. Yep, it seems that you've got it. Oh, one more thing. There's always one more thing. Hmm. The pool of energy. Once I had, once I had charged some engrams, I noticed that I felt a stronger connection to this place. Perhaps we can focus the energy in this place to help you with your divination skill. Just a hunch, of course. Sounds interesting. I'll investigate. Fantastic. Please take one of the engrams that I found to get yourself started and to gain a feel for them. Try not to lose it. Oh wow, look at that. So we just got this little engram. No Aggie engram. And that's another episode. And it'll be a good one. Uh, but of course, beforehand, I'll look into it to see, maybe get an indication as to where it leads. But for now, I'll end this episode on divination. I'm going to carry on um, training this skill and see if I can get it up a bit higher because it is fun at least get to the next location and then perhaps do a future episode on the next location and the items that we can get and make from there wherever you are in the world God bless you and keep you safe thank you for watching and have a fantastic day goodbye <laughs>